Okay, so okay. we're good. Uh, can you check Anne Marie's mic? Am I working? Good. We can hear you. Good and time. you can hear all of us, of course, in the audience. Okay, so thanks so much um, for coming to Giant, of course. And Giant wouldn't be possible with our partnerships that we create over the many years. And it's been a, um, obviously very good for us to partner with Vodafone, uh, who've been our key sponsors for this event. And we're so grateful for the support they've given us over the last six months to build a whole plan around our event this year. So thank you so much for that. We're very pleased. Um, I, to obviously just declare a conflict of interest, I have been working with Vodafone for the last three years as the ambassador for 5G and Connected Health, because obviously it's been so important how industry uh, collaborations have helped us during the pandemic, and also, as you mentioned earlier from Huma, about remote care, collaborative care, et cetera, virtual wards. This is about being connected, and that's really, from my perspective, so important for the future of healthcare. So it's a great pleasure, of course, to introduce Anne-Marie uh, here. And first of all, we want to get to know her more, I guess. So, Amory, can you tell us a bit about yourself, your background, yeah, sure. and your journey to healthcare? Okay, and, and first of all, thanks for welcoming me here today. It's, it's really nice to be here um, and to meet you, who uh, I, I met over the last two months. Um, in terms of background, so I'm just pausing with sound, yeah. So in terms of background, I joined from Oracle. I was with Oracle for five years, working across the public sector as a sales director and as a business development director. But more importantly before that, I was an NHS finance director in a mental health and community trust. And really in terms of my career leading up to then, and interestingly, I did the Nye Bevan Leadership Academy course, and I think this is something that makes you reflect on the, the leader that you are today. It was a bit of a long and meandering road. So I'm a finance director by background, uh, but worked in large-scale IT program change, and really that whole piece throughout of how does technology support and help efficiency, innovation. Um, I worked extensively with GE Healthcare in my private sector work, so kind of 10 years private sector, roughly 10 years public sector, giving away my age, and um, back to the private sector again to feel actually from the dark side in a way, you could actually do that a little bit more in terms of health outcomes. Great experience, um, incredible. And I guess being a finance director of the NHS, uh, you passed the test <laughs> Yes. <laughs> in surviving uh, our healthcare system, of course. Um, but also you have a personal journey as well about health that you mentioned the other day around why health is so important to you. Of course, it's important to all of us. We will have people affected by illness, etc. But Anne-Marie, I'd love to hear more about that. Okay, so I think, um, so I'm not a clinician. I know there's many, many clinicians here today. I'm also not a technologist. Um, I guess from the point of view of personal journey, uh, the reason why I'm here and why I'm particularly passionate about healthcare is my own kind of background. And again, reflecting that, what makes you who you are today. So health and social care perspective, um, my family, my mother in particular, um, suffered with mental health uh, distress over a number of years, undiagnosed, um, very lacking in evidence base because of the time at which that was at, um, the lack of kind of joining up of agencies. But even in the modern day today, um, actually looking at that and what could have been done at a much earlier stage to actually step in, evidence the care that was needed, identify her vulnerability. Those are things that very much kind of mean a lot for me as an individual now. So whether that's through data, whether that's through technology, whether that's through kind of simply the joining up beyond organizational boundaries, that's kind of a real driver for me in the personal space with this. And that's great to hear. And obviously, we all have that kind of those personal journeys. And that's why health is so important for all of us and important for us to get it right and fix things that are broken. Also look towards the future about how it can be made better for all of us. Um, now, the Centre for Health, uh, our audience probably don't know what it is. So I'd love you to tell us what that Centre for Health is yes. that you've been creating for the last few years. <laughs> yeah, OK, OK. So we've got a, a five-year strategic alliance between ourselves and Deloitte. And I'm glancing at one of my colleagues in the audience as I speak. Um, it's very much about the, the purpose of being able to take that digital acceleration that was caused by COVID and being able to really take that and harness it and take it forward. So bringing together that connectivity that Vodafone provides um, and combining it with the expertise that Deloitte can bring in terms 
terms of patient pathway redesign? How can we holistically then work with third sector, third, third, third party suppliers? I come from the charity sector as well, I didn't mention that, but, but actually join up with voluntary organizations, join up with innovation, uh, and actually bring all of those parties together into much more of an ecosystem to address the challenges that we've got now. That's really where we want to go. That's wonderful. And we look forward to seeing that whole journey as we uh, yeah. see your strategy. And that's strategy what's so exciting about today, developed. right? Seeing some of the, the, the stands and the people here and the ideas. This is how it gets brought to life through these types of things. How can we actually highlight these types of technologies? And how do we open the, the gate, the floodgates, really, that actually of what needs to happen? Great. Um, so let's get into the conversation that we're here for today, of course. Um, so the first thing to think about during COVID is how it highlighted the gross inequalities in healthcare in the UK. It just yeah. became more obvious. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad it's done that because it's, it's helped us now think about how we create a better healthcare system that's more equitable. Um, so from my perspective, um, how can technology help reduce these inequalities, Anne-Marie? What, what are your thoughts? Um, so health inequality, massive, massive challenge for, for everybody uh, globally, um, you know, but by definition, it's avoidable. And, and I think really, you know, how, we, how can we step into that? We can step into it at an individual level in terms of the technology and making it much more uh, connected, this sort of digital inclusion piece. And Vodafone has its kind of everybody connected program that is about helping and supporting in that space. Um, we then have the piece around how can we actually support the workforce and freeing up their capacity much more so you make services far more available and accessible. You reduce that access, the threshold to care, if you like, through digital services. And thirdly, there's the kind of data strand, which again, I, I would come back to to say in terms of cloud, in terms of AI, in terms of machine learning, everything we can do to actually identify those, those vulnerable people and make it a kind of iterative process of help. Yeah, and I guess one thing is about um, the digital divide that we've kind of heard about a lot mm. during the pandemic. Mm. What are your thoughts about that and how can Vodafone and Deloitte actually improve literacy and also improve that divide that we're seeing sometimes in healthcare? Yeah, I think that's about, that is about us being able to lean in in terms of both education and skills and capability and some of the programs of work that, that we're doing around the kind of communi uh, communicator community connected communities, sorry, can't get my words out, um, are, are very much about how we're helping in that space. I think you've, you've been involved in some of those aspects as well of really kind of getting the word out there, getting the skills up and getting the capability out there that sort of things like our, um, the, the Great British Tech Appeal, where you've actually got devices that are old devices that can be handed in and then we're being gifted out to vulnerable individuals with a package themselves to actually help and support in the community. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I remember, um, before the pandemic, actually, a lot of companies found it hard to support and penetrate the NHS. People would run scared away from the difficulties, the barriers the NHS often put forward. But the pandemic came along and suddenly we realised we couldn't do it on our own as clinicians mm. or healthcare workers. We needed support from outside. And that's been a huge change in terms of those barriers suddenly being dropped in healthcare. And I'll give you an example. I was part of the leadership team that built the Nightingale Centre at the uh, Excel uh, Center, the first hospital. And that was built within, th they say two weeks, but actually it's about four weeks, so I was there every day. But what happened was people at Vodafone mm. came in straight away and said, we can help you. What do you need from us? And that changed that conversation. It wasn't about you and them. It was, let's do it together, because everyone wants to help healthcare. And that's why I've been found fascinating from Vodafone and the ambition in healthcare. Can I ask a question myself? From of course. That? Okay. So from, <laughs> so from yeah. a, the point of view of actually getting the clinicians' input into that space, how do you think that that's reflected in the kind of healthcare? Do you think clinicians are involved enough? Yeah, so I think we were. I think we're finding our voice again. Uh, we were dis disempowered for a long time. Actually, now we're seeing actually we can be innovators. We can be the early adopters. We can have that change. So we are seeing much more, uh, I guess, acceptance that transformation is necessary and we're part of that whole community. So I'm seeing much closer collaboration between clinicians, the healthcare network, and of course, external providers mm -hmm. like yourself. So it's much better than it was before. And I think that's really positive. And I think larger suppliers are much more willing to kind of buddy up with those yeah. types of things. And I think that's a real gap that actually needs to be stepped into. So in terms of whether it's uh, actually helping organizations, small organizations step forward yeah. and get that kind of value and get that kind of visibility, that buddying up process is one that, that really needs to be helped and yeah. supported in that space. Yeah. Um, mm. And different mindsets also. Yeah. Healthcare, we're kind of, often we're one dimensional. 
that people like Vodafone with the expertise, with Deloitte, have got different mindsets to challenge, to provide solutions. We just can't see because we're stuck in our own ways for so long. So that's been really refreshing from my perspective. Um, in terms of the role of Vodafone and the Center for Health in the challenges that we've sort of described, how can you help us? <laughs> um, to me, that's about really opening up the floodgates, yeah? Um, having come from a finance background, actually, when you're in finance or when you're in data science or when you're in IT, you are a real enabler of everything that happens, whether that's decision making, whether that's data gathering. If something goes wrong right at the beginning, it's very hard to then fix it through the journey. And for me, Vodafone is all about how can we help and step forward with things like 5G technology, with things like IoT, uh, how can we kind of take forward all of the wonderful technologies you see here today, but actually create that connectivity base uh, across the NHS. So it's much more, not just based at the hospital and the physical hospital walls, but actually out there in healthcare anywhere. And there's, during the COVID, you were also offering phones and access and data, weren't you? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to be very honest here and say two months in, I'm not the one that would best <laughs> ask about that, but yeah, you course. probably know more than I do. But yeah. I know that, uh, that Vodafone very much kind of lent in as a strategic supplier to government. Did, and, yeah. and actually, you know, hearing that and coming in, I think that, that for me was what was part of the kind of authenticity, if you like, that came across as to why I joined Vodafone in particular. Yeah, and there was, so during the pandemic, uh, Vodafone which gave away free SIM cards, data, because we needed that data to be connected, to improve the digital divide, to reduce the uh, imbalance, if you like. That was a great, uh, great mm. idea. And I think a lot of NHS workers were given SIM cards across, be connecting, using telemedicine platforms. That kind of collaboration really helped us manage a difficult situation. So I think that was really kind of instrumental for me, yeah. thinking about how we kind of integrate some of these works. Um, do you know much about the Collective Living Project that was happening here? No. <laughs> <laughs> so they created this whole collaboration of, of a Collective Living and different platforms coming together to allow people to be remotely monitored, to manage their illnesses. We heard earlier about the virtual ward. It's kind of the same concept about being more virtual, that stepwise way of going from face to face, being more virtual and being more remote, of course. Um, the strategy for the Centre for Health. Yes. How far are we away from launching something that we can, everyone can see about our strategy? Yeah, I think that's, that for me is absolutely top of the list. So having joined um, back in October, um, actually it's about now kind of regrouping, understanding where we're at, um, understanding where we need to lean in. You know, we've got new issues such as kind of fuel poverty crisis and those kind of pieces okay. that, are, that are adding to what we're all going through. So actually, yes, we need to get that strategy much clearer, much more succinct and actually take it forward. So I would say we need to get something sorted for the new year. We have much more greater clarity about where we're working and, and look to see how we can really support some lighthouse projects. So we think about Q1 of next year? Yeah, definitely. OK, so watch, watch this space. <laughs> we'll be looking for this joint collaboration between Vodafone and Deloitte, and we'll see a strategy come through. Hopefully, we can all help support that as we go forward. In this kind of conference, you see a lot of different technologies. The technologies are great. Of course, they are. They aren't always a solution. And sometimes we throw technology at a problem, but understand the problem we're trying to solve. It's a reasonably difficult one. So I'd love to hear, get your thoughts about Vodafone and technology and how that comes together and how you support those technologies that are transformative in healthcare. Okay, so I think, you know, from my perspective, 5G is, is one of the things that we absolutely have to take forward. Um, I know there's a number of new hospitals that we're looking at building, you know, getting it right, right from the start. It would just open up so much in terms of uh, our, our real-time imaging, our mixed reality, our augmented reality stuff, whether that's training, whether that's digital services, really pushing healthcare within the hospital, but also outside it. So I think it's getting it right from the start in those new hospitals. Um, I saw Dr. Tim Ferriss speaking recently, and one of the things that he specifically referenced was within the NHS, that kind of uh, additionality rather than substitution. So sort of rather than trying to fix everything and take out the stuff that's not working, we keep on piling things on top and on top and on top. And I think we really need to be able to move things forward and change it so that we're really transforming rather than that kind of patchy, patchy approach. Yeah. And so 5G has been obviously really important mm. uh, rollout the last couple of years. Mm. I, I was at the launch, I remember, when Lewis Hamilton pressed the big red buzzer yes. to launch everything. It's yes. fascinating. <laughs> but actually, uh, with 5G, we're seeing now this whole connected piece that we're seeing 
It's going to be an enabler of that, isn't it? It's going to mm. help us support it is. some of those data transfers. It is. To the analytics, the AI, patients, the machine remotely. learning, everything that goes with that. I think yeah, it's very and the much Internet a of Things. I think piece. the both of them have a great department of Internet of Things. Yes. But actually, the Internet of Medical Things yes. makes a lot more sense to me. Yes. It and does. how five might enable Yeah, that, right? we have to follow the, the kind of fintech industry to some yes. extent and, and really take that forward. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you said that because it's about different industries. Mm. We're learning from other verticals. And that's the key here from fintech, from other industries that support different kinds of innovation. And we learn from them, and they actually learn from us as well. And I love that whole concept where Vodafone have different verticals. The healthcare seems to go through all of those across the piece, right? Healthcare is very much a priority. And it's, it's actually a bit of a testing ground for us. We're not used to doing a vertical, and it's something that because it's a priority, we really want to take forward. And I think Deloitte is, is helping us in that as well, is really making us forge, if you like, that strategic alliance. It's a very positive step forward. Yeah, for those of you who don't know about 5G, 5G allows you to download uh, a higher speed. So you can download one, two, three, four, five gigabytes per second. Imagine a Netflix film in one second. That's the kind of thing we imagine, right? That's the speed. More important about latency, latency is only 0.1 millisecond, which is imperceptible to human behavior. You can, it's real time. So real time surgery remotely is happening, robotic surgery, for example. Both of them have connected two hospitals in South Wales already through 5G networks using their proximity mm. platform. So you can do remote training across different hospitals. Imagine that, three years ago. Incredible change about being remote and training and mentoring people on a remote basis. And also, I think Coventry University is also now 5G enabled. Yes. Is that right? Yes, it is. And, and they're taking forward a huge tranche of stuff to help and support it, particularly in training. Um, and I think that's a really important space. So I, you, you mentioned the workforce space. How do you actually encourage people to, to come into medicine, to come into healthcare uh, with the circumstances that we've had, particularly over recent years? Actually, technology is part of that and how we can, we can help with the training, but also inspire people to come into something that's much more forward thinking moving. Yeah. So connectivity is the key piece, right? It's the missing ingredient. When I talk about Internet of Things, and um, we go about having data, having wearable sensors, great. But the bit that's missing, which I call the kind of the covalent bond that holds it together, is actually 5G and connectivity. Mm. And that's why it's vital that Vodafone support us. And of course, the NHS infrastructure is poor, right? It's patchy. <laughs> so what are we going to do about the infrastructure yes. of the NHS? Because obviously, we can talk about these great technologies, but you kind of get to computers sometimes, right? The real life stories that we have. What are your thoughts about how we manage that? Yeah. So, I mean, having come from an NHS organization, actually a huge challenge is about that really real fragmentation of IT investment historically, of IT skills, and that's to do with the, the, the IT workers themselves, but also actually the patients, the carers, everybody. Um, we need to help and support in terms of driving that coherence and vision, not just at an organizational level, but actually at an ICS level now. Um, how can we get into a place where that system is aligned such that everybody is using the same infrastructure and tapping into it? There's no need to create these kind of stovepipes of systems. And that's really the vision where we need to get to moving forward. Yeah, and some things we've been doing at Vodafone is having uh, breakfast meetings with the CEOs across the UK, mm -hmm. uh, supported by Vodafone's team saying, well, Let's listen to the problems uh, from CEOs, CCIOs, people in senior management saying, okay, and clinicians, of course, saying, how do we solve some of your problems? I love the fact that they were meeting people at the level they were meant to be, rather than being distant, saying, let's help you, let's enable you in the background to build infrastructure, to build the support structure so that you can do clinically what you're supposed to be mm -hmm. doing. And I found that quite refreshing mm -hmm. for a company to reach out mm -hmm. in that manner. And I hope yes, we continue. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and it needs to move forward. Around the ecosystem part, what would you say to those big suppliers to help that move forward? Uh, I'd say, look, we, we need, I, I think that healthcare faces many challenges, as you've seen already. We need support, we need to collaborate. And collaboration is the key word you take from this event today. How do we work? with Vodafone, Deloitte and others, saying we have these great problems to solve. Do you have any solutions for us? Can you help us understand it better? Absolutely. And by working together, I think those problems become much easier to solve and perhaps a way that we can make the healthcare much fairer overall. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, use the same resource in a different manner. There's no more money in healthcare. We're not getting more money thrown at our healthcare service. So how do we create a smarter system using partnerships and collaborations to help us clinicians ultimately treat our patients at the end better. That's kind of, I think, what we're going to get away from this conversation yep. ultimately. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, the other problem we have, as I mentioned earlier, is that digitalization piece of healthcare and this kind of the power of partnership. So you're only two months in. Yes. <laughs> so we have to you know, forgive Anne-Marie, of course, understanding the complexity of what we are at the moment. But she's based in healthcare before. You've yes. seen the problems from mental, uh, mental health care yeah. uh, strategy you had before. How are you going to be thinking about this in your new role yeah. as the head for Centre for Health? Mm. Um, so for us now, it's about doing that kind of exploratory work, really working with organisations, trusts, healthcare organisations, the ICSs, to really talk through the challenges, to understand and uh, work with them to co-create and develop solutions. And I think that's a really important component of, of what we're doing, that kind of co-creation space together, rather than trying to turn up and say, you need this. <laughs> um, I think that's something, that's something we've done historically, um, and it's, it's now needs to move into a different phase. Lovely. And from your perspective, now that you've kind of taken this role, hmm. uh, and we of course wish you much success in this because we will need it to be successful uh, from a patient's perspective ultimately, yes. um, is what are your priorities now that you've got this new role, you've settled in in your surroundings? Yes. What, what is, what, what is not sure ambition? I quite settled in there, but yeah, <laughs> settled not. in the surroundings. Um, if I look at what the, the, the challenges are across the NHS right now, um, and, and specifically, you know, kind of around health inequalities, we've touched on that. Workforce, for me, is actually one that really stands out. You know, how do we actually retain, but also recruit into that workforce? And that's a long-standing issue that's been uh, eroded and eroded over time with some of the challenges. So actually, one of, one of my priorities as we go into this is in making sure that we're uh, addressing those issues as we go through the door. So yes, absolutely, patients come first, but how can we support those clinicians who ultimately are in this because it's where they want to be? Um, there's lots of other places they could be. Um, how do we actually support those clinicians in the workforce to, to improve and to help and to guide um, what can be achievable? Yeah, no, and that's, uh, if we could solve that problem, that'd be great for all of us in healthcare, of course. And the other thing that I think we often forget about, uh, particularly these conferences, is the patient voice. Uh, but ultimately, whatever we do has to improve uh, the patient experience or improve outcomes, improve value-based healthcare, so that ultimately the, the person who's going to benefit mostly is going to be the patient. And we're all patients, of course, in our own way. What are your thoughts about that and how Vodafone is ambition around ultimately patient care? Mm. Somebody, uh, at a, at a, I'm trying to remember who it was now, but somebody in the last couple of days said that actually uh, when, you, when anyone in any part of the system is, is considering what they should do, they should be really considering how much time um, or effort or energy is it taking from that patient. Not just the outcome of care, but actually their transition through. Um, when I did the Nye Bevan course, you know, the patient voice was something that was very much focused upon. I don't think we do enough of that now. I think potentially the, the, the NHS does, say that in the widest sense, but I think probably as suppliers, we don't. Um, we have that interaction often with clients. We probably don't reach enough into the patient population um, and actually kind of be, I know we all are part of that patient population to some extent, but actually may, maybe we need to stretch into that more and say, okay, what's needed in this space? So that we're doing that co-creation with the clinicians, with the workforce, but actually with that patient voice as well. Right, absolutely, it's so important. We often forget that whole concept. Um, obviously, we'll hear from Gus later on uh, today at the other conference, we'll have panel discussion uh, around uh, this collaboration. Uh, what is, what's your collaboration look like with Vodafone and Deloitte? I'd love to hear more about that. I'm sure the audience yeah. wants to hear more about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's very much kind of at that strategic alliance level, so we know clearly where we want to go, we know what we want to help with. Um, from the point of view of that kind of consultancy and expertise that Deloitte brings, um, it's about me able to articulate our vision clearly within Vodafone of how, what we can help and support. So we look to, to Deloitte very much to kind of help identify those patient pathways where we can help, and then we kind of try to bring in that connectivity behind. And I think that combination is a very strong one. Um, and as, as we move through this, it's about identifying where we can help most. And so we're currently going through that exercise of saying, okay, where can we actually help most at this point in time? How exciting. And for me, there, there's three C words now. It's connectivity. Yes. It's consultancy. Yes. And it's collaboration. Yes. I think that's a nice way of ending our conversation, probably. Definitely. Uh, Amber, any last words for our audience here today about your role, about Vodafone, the healthcare community, what you're hoping to achieve, and how we can help you? 
I think reach out is the biggest answer. Reach out, ask. Vodafone is not known in the healthcare space. Actually, we want to change that. This is something we want to lean into and support with. So reach out. And also, please do go and see the Vodafone stand downstairs. They've got a massive stand downstairs, lots of amazing technology, and their partners that are working with them. Go and say hello, collaborate with them, find out how we can help support one another in our ambition to improve healthcare as we go forward. It's a delight, of course, to uh, invite you here. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on your first couple of months Thank you. and the future of the uh, Centre for Health. And uh, we wish you well and a lot of success as a community of entrepreneurs and innovators that this will help us yes. in some ways reimagining what healthcare could look like. Thank you. Anne-Marie, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.